So guys, we are back. We are back. And I'm dedicated to doing this every single week without fail. I'm going to try. See what I mean? Even if I just come on the screen and I just read out my predictions and it takes me two, three minutes, I'm going to do it. But I want to share my Premier League match week predictions every single week. So we are in match week six. And by the time you know it, it's May. And... Arsenal are not celebrating being champions. <laughs> ah, that's just an Arsenal joke. So big up to any Arsenal fans watching this. Don't feel no way though. But um, you guys injured my one of my best players and I'm still quite peeved about that. So also make sure you smash the thumbs up button for this video. Let's get it to 100 likes. We didn't reach 100 likes last week though. But it's all good. It's all good. You know what I mean? We're going to try again this week. So, guys, um, we have 10 games to talk about. And, of course, I'll be betting on these games $1. And because I don't want to lose money. So, I'm just betting a dollar, $10 a week. And so far, I haven't been losing nothing. If you want to bet, I think, um, let me know and I'll share a link with you to my um, DraftKings. So, you know, maybe I could get some type of points or something. I don't know. But we had EFL Cup matches. I did talk about those in a separate video. So, you could go check that out. Fourth round draw, check that out. And we had Europa League matches this week as well. So let's just run through the Europa League matches that involved Premier League teams. I'm just focusing on the Premier League teams. Man United won 20 of the Dutch League won. And I have to say, this is a shameful result for Eric Ten Hag and his boys. Coming up against a Dutch team, him being a Dutch manager as well. But... Man United, you can't beat 20. No disrespect to 20. But you got to beat these teams. It doesn't matter what team, who you put on the field, you got to beat FC 20. You're setting a bad precedent. Uh, the precedent has been set <laughs> for Man United. So Ericsson in uh, the 35th minute and Lamers in the 68th, a draw. Man United, I've been seeing a meme going around the 11th in the Premier League and 11th in the Europa League table. Still early times, but it's a good joke. Always find time to appreciate a good joke. So, guys, Tottenham 3, Carabaj, nil. Tottenham doing the business. Brennan Johnson scoring in the first minute. Pape Mata signed a 52nd. Dominic Solanke in a 68th. But they did have um, Dragusin sent off in the seventh minute. So, for the majority of the game, they played with 10 men and still slapped up Carabaj. And that's what I'm talking about. Give it up to Spurs. So let's move on to the Premier League teams. Um, the Premier League matches, I should say. And let's just recap what happened on match day five really, really fast. West Ham nil, Chelsea three, Aston Villa three, Wolves one, Villa coming from behind there. Fulham three, Newcastle one, Ipswich one, Southampton one. Big, big point for Ipswich. They've now gone three games on the trot without losing. They drew all three. So they'll need a win, though, so to keep their, you know, campaign going strong. Tottenham 3, Brentford 1, Leicester 1, Everton 1, Everton yet again dropping points. Three games in a row they have dropped points from a winning position. Liverpool 3, Bournemouth 0, Crystal Palace 0, Manchester United 0, it ain't looking good for United, man. This is this is some poor stuff. Brighton 2, Forest 2. Both teams looking good. Still unbeaten this season in the Premier League. Man City 2, Arsenal 2. That was a highly controversial game. Highly talked about game. Rodri out for the rest of the season. And there's just a whole bunch of stuff, man. Haaland throwing the ball <clears throat> to the back of... Um, Gabriel's head. I didn't even see those things. You see what I'm saying? They don't show. Just know, guys. Just know. They don't show us everything, especially us in the um, the U.S. We don't see everything on TV. You know, they sense a lot of things. So let me just get my water and depth for when I feel you know a bit thirsty. Yeah. So yeah, those are the results, and um, we're going to match week six. So the table, not so significant but city is on top i think liverpool second and arsenal a third 
right now and um it might be filler fourth if i'm not mistaken but um let's run through the fixtures don't want to be super 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 long and i'm not trying to be super long so newcastle versus manchester city and city have definitely enjoyed some success against newcastle in the recent matches and they do have a 60 percent chance to win this game did the double over newcastle well yeah let me see let me double check yeah they did the double over newcastle last season and uh, city played newcastle four times in all competitions the efl cup and in the um, the fa cup newcastle actually knocked my team man city out of the fa cup um efl cup last season in september so around this time last season city gone knocked out by newcastle i think that has to had to be the fourth round so <clears throat> newcastle has been in very good form despite um losing to fulham in their last game but they've started the season very strongly as for city despite a few draws they've been you know one in the champions league against inter and of course the game against arsenal man city's been in imperious form but you know losing players left right and center though gotta keep an eye on that but um i think you know the record the recent record against newcastle i think man city should rump home champions here despite not having rodri you know kovacic rico lewis even uh, Matthias nunez these guys could step up and you know play that Raji role in the middle of the field but i think pep is gonna start using more of a double pivot even bernardo silva john stones akanji these guys could all step in there and play that role you know um pep's gonna use a double pivot so Raji, one man could handle that you know that situation in the midfield he's not there pep's gonna use two man two men to handle that situation you know um newcastle is gonna be a threat with guys like um of course isaac you know, and, um, you know, uh, Bruno Gimaresh and Joel Linton, you know, Man City always vulnerable on the, you know, the counter, especially playing the high line, could get in behind two guys like Anthony Garden and um, Jacob Murphy as well, Miguel Almiron, if these guys feature. So you gotta, you gotta definitely keep an eye on that though. But for this game, I'm going to go for a 2-1 win for City. I think it's going to be a close game. Man City might score. Maybe they could concede first, come from behind, or score two, you know. But I think City is going to walk away victors here. Erling Haaland in, is in imperious form right now. It's going to be very difficult to stop him. So definitely keep an eye on Haaland's form and his consistency. Foden, you know, he still have to find his form because he's just starting to get involved. Savino, he's been good. Doku's been good. You know, it's always Bernardo. Gundogan back at the club. It's going to be tough to beat City. It's really going to be tough. You know, especially, you know, solid defense as well. Vardial playing good football. It's going to be tough. So, 2-1 to Manchester City in this game. We're going to keep it moving though. Chelsea versus Brighton. Chelsea's had a very good record against Brighton recently. And Chelsea, they've been in very good form. So, and, you know, I know last season, we used to joke around a lot about Chelsea on the Pochettino, but they did finish strongly. And under Enzo Maresca, these guys are looking good. I think he's really starting to find his best 11 and rotating the players from competition to competition. And Chelsea are, uh, are looking good. You see what I mean? You have um, Nicholas Jackson scoring. You have Cole Palmer scoring. You have Nkunku in good form. You have Noni Madueke who had a really good game and he's been showing good form as well. Their defense looking pretty solid. And, you know, it's going to be hard for Brighton to stop Chelsea. They're three wins on the trot for Brighton. I know they're unbeaten still, but Brighton has one win in their last five games against Chelsea. And that win was in April of 2023, a 2-1 win at Stamford Bridge. So, since then, there's, there's, it, they've all been close games. Four, well, that was a Premier League, that was a um, friendly game. But 1-0 to Chelsea, EFL Cup, 3-2 to Chelsea, and 2-1 to Chelsea. For this game, I'm going to go for a 3-2 thriller. 
Because Brighton, they, you can't take your eye off these guys, man. Adingra, you know, M Mitoma. Um, the new guy, if he features the um, the guy from um, the Gambia, what's his name? Minty. He didn't, I didn't think he'd start the last game. You know, Welbeck's been in good form. You know, they look solid, man. They look solid on the Fabian Herzler, 31 years old. So, for this one, three to the Chelsea. Three to the Chelsea. I think that's a fair assessment. And... Uh, I am definitely going to bet on Nicholas Jackson scoring. He's been in good form, though. His numbers are very tricky, especially from last season. He could have scored like 30 goals, but he just kept missing them. But I definitely see an improvement on his finishing from last season. So definitely kudos to um, Jackson there. Enzo Fernandez and Caicedo, they kind of falling under the radar a bit, but seems like they're doing solid work in the midfield too. So And... Robert Sanchez, he's been very good in goal. Definitely making a big difference. Next game, Brentford versus West Ham. Guys, also drop your predictions down below. For this one, I'm not going to elaborate too much on this one. But the results has been back and forth, you know, between West Ham and Brentford. You know, not really sure where this one's going to go. And it's 30% chance West Ham's going to win 43 Brentford, according to Google, 27% draw. And both teams are in so-so form, with Brentford being in the better form as they've picked up some wins this season already. And the matches they've lost are against very formidable opponents in Spurs. They lost to City, and they've lost to um, Liverpool as well this season. So, not bad teams to lose to. But um, for this one, though... With the absence of Johan Wiss, I think it's definitely going to affect Brentford in the attacking, you know, um, third of the field. And for West Ham, they haven't been great. They did pick up a win against Palace. They did not look good in the EFL Cup against Liverpool. They, they just look a bit out of sorts on the look, Lopetegui, who's still trying to find his best combination. But I think for this one, they're going to manage to squeeze out a draw. I'm going to say 1-1 one, one draw between Brentford and West Ham in this London derby. Let us keep it moving. Everton versus Crystal Palace here. This one is a hard one to predict because Palace, they, they haven't been playing the greatest football, to be honest. And for Everton, they haven't been playing badly, but defensively, they've looked really, really poor. Palace coming off of a nil-nil draw against United. That's a solid result. That could help them, you know, give them a bit of impetus going into this game and a bit of confidence. But Everton, man, having two games to win and then losing both of them in the same fashion and then winning a game and then actually freaking dropping the points from a winning position there in their last game against Leicester to only pick up a point. So in their last three games... They should have picked up nine points, hypothetically speaking, you know, looking back. But they only picked up one. This could be, you know, this could be very important points at the back end of the season when it comes to if Everton's going to get relegated or not. <laughs> you see what I mean? But under Sean Dice, they've showed some grit. they showed some resilience. And I think they will definitely bounce back in this game, in my opinion, and win this one. Two goals to one. Because... They've started to score goals. Calvert-Lewin, you know, he's looking good. Dwight McNeil, you know, these guys are, you know, they, 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 they're looking good up top. But could they stop the ball from going in the, 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 the back of the net on their end? That's the problem. Pickford, I think, needs to do a lot better. And I think with Tarkovsky coming back into the team, you know, fit again, I think that should help. They, they do have a few players as well um, that's injured. And that could definitely be affecting them. I think um new player that they bought, Chermiti, he's injured. He's been injured. And just let me give you a little bit of injury eps, um, insight there. I don't know if you do care about Everton, but Yusuf um, Chermiti, Armando Broja, Seamus Coleman. These guys are injured. So, um yeah, it's going to be a tough game. Crystal Palace would depend on every Richard Eze. You know, um, Jean-Philippe Mateta has been in great form. Eddie Nketiah has definitely looked okay since he's joined. 
and they're going to look for these guys for inspiration, you know, to go on to win this game, you know. Um, another player that's been highly rated, um, what's his name, man? Wharton. Adam Wharton, I think his name is. You know, he did have a, a rough game, I think, against, was it against United? They took him off. But, um, yeah, 2-1 to Everton, though. I think that's a solid prediction. The next game, Arsenal versus Leicester City. Guys, both teams did play in the middle of the week, EFL Cup. And Leicester won on pens. Arsenal smashed up um, Bolton. Leicester used to... Let, let me just um, bring up the, the history really quick. The Leicester of old, after they won the Premier League, and they used to compete, you know what I mean? They, they really used to compete. Because um, they used to compete. If I check further back in terms of the matches, let me see how far back I could go. Um, Leicester. Okay, 2020, they beat Arsenal 1-0. A 1-1 draw at the Emirates. A 2-0 win at the King Power. A 3-0 win back in 2019. A 3-1 win. You know, you know, they used to really compete. They really used to compete. They had their, their, that moment where they used to really compete against bigger teams, right? But since they got relegated, they went down. They came back up under uh, Maresca. He left. They're now under um, Steve Cooper. They've, they've had a solid start to the season. Not going to lie. They look okay. But coming up against Arsenal, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Don't get me wrong. Leicester could be a banana banana skin for for arsenal if they go arsenal going complacent but arsenal has not shown that type of complacency that we saw from them in the past so i don't think we're gonna see that though i really don't think so jamie vardy he snubbed arsenal he didn't go to arsenal they wanted him and he used to perform very very well um against the gunners from my recollection maybe i'm wrong but um just from slight recollection, I can remember Jamie Vardy doing well against Arsenal. But this is a whole other ball game, man. It's a whole other Arsenal team. You see how difficult they were to break down in the Man City game. And even though they did drop points to, that was Brighton they dropped points to, I don't see them dropping any points in this game. I'm going to say 4-1 to Arsenal. Despite not having Martin Odegaard in the team, I just think they've adapted nicely. Raheem Sterling did have a really good game in the cup match. Got to give him credit. And maybe we could see Raheem Sterling start in this one. But 4-1 to Arsenal. Let me know your predictions down below, guys. Next one, Forrest versus Fulham. Two teams who have really enjoyed um, good form so far in the league in the first five games. Got to give it up to these teams, man. Nuno Espirito Santo in charge of Forrest. And Marco Silva at the helm at of um, Fulham, they've had a really, really good starts. And Forest, they're currently eighth, unbeaten, two wins and three draws. And Fulham, they're ninth, two wins, two draws, single loss there, eight points. Great, great start for these teams who some people will probably say they um, probably have them in their three teams to get relegated, maybe in the recent past. But Fulham's not that type of team anymore. Raul Jimenez has shown really, really good form lately. You know, um, Emil Smith Rowe, he's looking good. Even on Adama Traore, you know, he's looked really, really good, man. So Fulham, not a team to take lightly. Forrest, listen, they've looked good. They've looked really, really good. I just want to um, double check something and make sure, you know, to see. I don't want to call names and then the players are not available. You see what I'm saying? But for this one, though, I have a prediction. Don't know if it's going to happen because uh, Morgan Gibbs-White is actually suspended for this one. And he's their talisman. He's far as tal talismanic player. But I do still, it's going to be a weird prediction. I do still think Forrest are going to win this one at home. Two goals to one. I'm going to say two one. I'm not going to elaborate further on this one. But I'm going to say a 2-1 win to Forrest. Guys, let's keep it moving, man. Let's keep it moving. Wolves versus Liverpool here. This one... Oh, shoot. I think I write down the wrong prediction, man. I write down the wrong prediction for this one. Yeah. 
Wolves did beat Liverpool um, back, I think, last year. I think they beat them three goals to nil. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember that. But um, for the most part, Wolves versus Liverpool is always pretty much three points up for grabs for the Reds. And uh, under Arnest Slot, I think Liverpool, they have looked really, really good despite the loss at home to Forest. They bounced back against AC Milan and um, AC Milan, and in their last game, they had to, who did, who did they play? I think Brentford, you know. So, and in the cup match, Liverpool did look really good against West Ham. It's gonna be hard to predict uh, anything other than a Liverpool win here for this one for sure, though. Definitely, it's gonna be difficult to predict anything other than a Liverpool win. So, 73% chance, according to Google, was 11% chance. And I think that win last February, that 3-0 win, you know, helped boost their chances here. If I go to more matches, let me see how far back I could go and see Wolves' success against Liverpool. FA Cup, didn't do too bad there. 2023, a 2-2 draw forced a replay. They lost. And... Yeah, Wolves have been really, you know, been a pushover for Liverpool. Well, they did, yeah, they had some FA Cup successes, but for the most part, since promoted, it's been all Liverpool. So, pretty much, pretty much. So, um, for Slot, he, he has a bounty of talent to choose from, especially um, in the attacking third of the field, whether he wants to go in with... Darwin Nunes or Jota up top. There's Cody Gakpo. There's Luis Diaz. There's Salah. You see what I'm saying? And there's Shubba Sly in the mid in midfield there. There's Curtis Jones. Wh which way he's going to go here? Because then you got to keep Champions League in mind. You got to keep, you know, um, just, just rotating players. International break. So let's see. Let's see. But um, for Wolves... For Wolves, for Gary O'Neill and Wolves, I think it's been a horrible start. They do have one point at the bottom of the table, one draw. And that draw, that draw, let me just make sure I get my facts right. That draw was against Forrest. So that was, um, what, a Midlands derby, right? No, that's not a Midlands derby. But maybe. <laughs> but uh, Forrest, you know... Forest Wolves 1-1. One, one. That's the only joy they've seen this season. But they haven't been terrible. But I, they've they've really suffered in the final third of the field. And in the defensive third, it has not been good. You see what I mean? So, 3-0 to the Reds. Let's keep it moving. Sunday matches now, guys. Ipswich versus Aston Villa. These teams last met when they were both in the championship Aston Villa got promoted, they came to the Premier League, survived, and they've really turned into a, a solid team, a solid top six team. And they've heavily invested in the club, they look good, and they're playing some great football under Unai Emery, playing in the Champions League as well. So, you know, give it up to Aston Villa, man. Oli Watkins, he has picked really good form. John Duran has looked really, really good when he comes off the bench. Morgan Rogers, oh my God, one of the breakout players this season. He's looked good. The back end of last season, he did look good too. But overall, they've had they've been solid. Emmy Martinez in goal. They they're getting players back. You know, like um, Leon Bailey, Brendia, and Cole. You know, what I mean, there's all this John McGinn. The team's solid. The team is solid, solid, solid team. One of the teams I do enjoy watching. Jacob um, Ramsey, you know, and the list goes on and on and on. They even sold um, Diaby. They sold Diaby. They were fine. They were fine, man. You know, and the defense with 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 um, the Spaniard name again, man. That guy, Pa Pa Torres. You know, he's looked good. You know, what I mean, Aston Villa would be all right. Ezri Conza. I think Aston Villa would be okay once Tyrone Mings ain't playing. I, I just think so. No disrespect, but Tyrone Mings is terrible, man. He he deserves to be playing in the championship. He's just full of mistakes. He could be things could be going good and bam, Tyrone Mings happen. So for this one, guys, I'm gonna say three one win to Villa, who did play in the middle of the week too in the cup matches. Three one to Villa. Not gonna stretch this out 
Ipswich has had a good run in their last three games. You know, bam, 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 three draws, one, one draws on the on the on the on the, um, the trot. But they're gonna lose this one. The, the balloon's gonna pop here. Two more matches to go. Let's run through these games and call it a day. Man United versus Tottenham. The biggest game this weekend, I think. The City Newcastle one is big too, but this one is big. And uh, for United, they've been in terrible form, man. Nil nil against Crystal Palace. You think about the the one one against FC Twenty. And I could. Do I need to even elaborate? Do I need to elaborate on how horrible United has been? You see what I'm saying? Losing to Brighton. You see, I know this respect to Brighton. You see what I'm saying? I know this respect to Brighton, though. I saw a meme on Facebook where it says, you know, like, um, Man City's rivals, Liverpool, United, Arsenal, maybe. Realist in reality, yeah, those are the rivals. Liverpool's rivals, Man United, maybe City, and those are the rivals. Man United, they, who they think are their rivals? Liverpool and Man City, but in reality, it's actually Brighton. <laughs> Oh man, poor United, man. Poor United. How long is Ten Hag gonna last this season? You see what I'm saying? And for United, they did pick up a 7 0 win against Barnsley, beat Southampton 3 0, but lost 3 0 to Liverpool and lost 2 1 to Brighton on the trot. Those were on the trot and lost the Community Shield as well. So it's been a very so so, very, very so so season so far for United with, with, a, with us, with a very mediocre win against fulham the win against southampton southampton wasn't that bad they should have scored first and they could have you know the results have been poor the results have been really poor as for spurs i think they've been okay spursy sometimes okay in the next game you know but i think they need guys like son to start really tick you know scoring goals and they need you know, Solanke's been scoring. Madison has been in okay form. But they just need more players contributing. And they need to, you know, just work on keeping the ball out the back of the net. And stop being so spursy all the time. I don't know how easy that is. But, you know, Spurs would always be Spurs. But I like the type of uh, the brand of football that um, Postecoglou plays. You know what I mean? Positive football. I think they're going to beat United. Two goals to nil at Old Trafford. Embarrass them. Fans go leave around 70 minutes. And it's going to be another shit show of a result for the United Faithfuls. 2-0 to Spurs. Who did play in the middle of the week in the Europa League. And United did play in the Europa League. United, you know. Spurs won. United drew. And the last one. The South Coast Derby. Bournemouth versus Southampton. Bournemouth has, um, Southampton, you know, it, the results have varied, you know, there's periods where Bournemouth had good results, wins, but Southampton, I think, has had the, the, the more shared, um, the spoils here, and for this time around, it's, it's a bit different, because Southampton are coming into the league as a newly promoted team, while Bournemouth has really, you know, gone up the ranks if you want to put it that way and not a, a pushover anymore and they've they've really attracted some solid players to their side and they've looked good they've looked really really good i'm not gonna draw the, drag this out for a long time but um russell martin and southampton they've been struggling to get the ball in the back of the net and also to keep it out and for um, for Bournemouth, it's it hasn't been the case. You know they've been doing good. Um, you know um, what's his name there, man? The striker. He's been he's been doing really really good. I, I, I'm forgetting his name right now. I'm running a blank right now. He scored against Liverpool, man. And uh, and on, on, on Antoine Semenyo. Semenyo. He's been looking very very sharp and. You know, providing the, the impetus up top and they've they've just have a they just have a solid, solid team. I cannot see Bournemouth losing to Southampton in this game. Southampton just look too flaky at the moment. They they're very attacking team. They play attractive football, but it's like they're stuck in the ways when things are not going their way. You see what I mean? Two one to Bournemouth over Southampton. These are my predictions for match week six. 
just about half an hour you let me know yours in the comment section down below i could feel i feel a lot better this week you know the grooves coming back guys you know the more i do this the better i get and um guys um if you're asking why am i doing this in the car if it's you have i gotta pick my son up from school this is the only time i got i just come off from work you know, so I got to do what I, I got to do. You see what I'm saying? So just keep supporting the thing, you know, and let's, let's keep this thing going, man. So, guys, there's a lot of news I could talk about, you know, a lot of things I could get into, but I just don't have the time. I don't want to draw drag this out any longer. Let me know if every any talking points that I miss, anything that I miss. Let me know down below. I cannot cover everything. You know, please appreciate it. Like the video if you haven't yet done so. Subscribe if you're new. Um, let me know your predictions down below as well. And from your boy, Dom, this is Dominic Rich FC. Until next time, peace out, Rich Squad. Peace. We talk, guys. We talk.